Today we're installing the Stage 2 Ironman 4x4 suspension kit for our Tacoma. We will be showing you the overall installation experience and some difficulties we encountered. We're not professional mechanics and do not recommend using our video solely for advice. For full installation guides, please check out the Ironman's official installation video linked in the description. Here's the time lapse of the standard removal prior to the installation. Okay, so Iron Man uh, included the sway bar relocation spacer kit that I found it wasn't uh, in the installation video. Um, so I think I'm gonna do it here where I'm gonna uh, disconnect this sway bar right here. I'm gonna disconnect the sway bar uh, right here, which I already loosened the boat. Um, I'm gonna disconnect it and then I'll get that one done before I remove the stock strut so I think that will make the job easier so the main purpose of this oops the main purpose of this uh, relocation is to prevent the rubbing with the bigger shocks I'm gonna be installing later um, to move this uh, sway bar a little lower forward so the, the sway bar uh, relocation spacer is done uh, it's right here these two are the these one and this one is behind this bill right here are the ones that are supplied by the uh, the spacer from Iron Man. So you put these bolts onto the OEM uh, frame, so the spacer will be mounted there. And then these bolts. So these are the bolts that's used by uh, the. Uh, do not use the one that comes with the car. So use the one that Iron Man supplies. They're a little bit dip, uh, different in sizes. So put these two to mount the sway bar onto the spacers. So right here. These are kind of hard to do by one person, so it will be very easy for somebody in the middle to hold this, uh, uh, to hold the uh, sway bar for you to put these bolts on. So overall, yeah, make sure you tighten them to the torque specs, and then yeah, both sides, both sides are done. Prior to the removal of the OEM shocks after sway bar disconnect, the striking point of the ball joint required more force than we anticipated. Since this was our first time working on the truck, we didn't want to bash it too hard and break anything. But after a few more tries, we were able to smash it loose. The shock kit we ordered came disassembled. When assembling the new shock, we had to reuse the OEM strut top. So here's what it looked like removed and being assembled using the spring compressor. Finally got this strut into the, the coil spring. So what's difficult here is uh, the spring, the spring right here. When you compress them before you put them on, it needs to be very straight. Otherwise, the strut top will get probably stuck on this little rubber bushing inside the strut top. So it will not fully go in.
Inferno. So we were about to install the rear shock and then we realized something wrong and we put the shock on and after we worked on the passengers on the driver's side we realized that Iron Man sent us two totally different shocks. Uh, we are shocked. So I guess we have to call it a day and then when we contacted Iron Man, their customer service was excellent. They immediately placed a new order to ship the correct rear shock absorber and it arrived the next day. Along with the rear shock issue, we found out it was impossible to reuse the factory leaf spring bushings like Iron Man suggested. We were able to get another pair of polyurethane bushings from them as well. After getting all of our parts, we were able to come back another day to finish the install. So we just got the uh, leaf spring installed on this one. So we have some difficulties. We will get the alignment, alignment thing. Here's alignment with the, with the center of this. Uh, what do you call this? Leaf spring, yeah. So to get this aligned, what I found out is like to balance the load on the other side of the axle will make the To balance the weight of the axles will make the install much easier so that, uh, that the axle so the axle is more like horizontal and then so we were able to like align this with just like some wiggling yes so now it's on uh, now it's on and uh, we're moving on to the final step to get the shocks on so here as you can see the bottom uh, mounting hole uh, this is not centered so when you put this onto the mounting bracket at the bottom, so we'll see that here will hit the, the back of this uh, shackle. So the top still needs more angle. So this will not fit. So what happens is that you need to install this the other way around. So then you'll have more clearance on the left right here. So when I plug it in, bottom. So when I plug it in, so then I can and extend this rod and then get that onto there. So this is why I found like Iron Man 
they did a little interesting job. It's like they put a sticker on this, but I have to face it this direction. So I don't know if this is intentional or, I mean, is it by design or, you know, is this a mistake? But I found it very interesting. So uh, I'm gonna get this installed now. I'll, I'll show you the final result later. So here is the final look of this Ironman 4x4 suspension kit. So the front has about uh, two and a half inches of lift. And then the back is about uh, around like one and a half to two uh, inches of lift. So, and then the like stepping backwards a little bit. And on the back has, we have the Tufts Up Trailhead uh, rooftop tent. It weighs about 120 pounds. And then the, the Voodoo rack we have right there is around uh, 60 to 70 pounds. And it will also have the deck system, which is another uh, probably around 100 pound ish when you double check on that. So this is what it looks like. I mean, the ground is not very level here, but you can see uh, how, how it looks from the side directly and I'm just gonna do a quick walk around yeah I'll also do a another video about this uh, TRD Pro Grail install with the with the with the Tacomas that's equipped with the camera